Okay, I will try my best because it's not easy. I'm not only the, the only woman in the table, but I am also the, like the last one talking about that. Sorry, you were not the only one invited, but uh, in the end, sorry. You, no you, problem at all. It, it it's just, I have to say there. it, being a feminist. Uh, let, me, let, me also say, let me also say that um, <laughs> I am not only a feminist, but I am also a political scientist. And uh, it, is, it is important that nobody has mentioned the concept of party systems and the governability of political systems. Or, or, or not really focus on that. Let me focus on that because many years ago, uh, you know, Almond, Verba, uh, Robert Dahl reflected about the conditions under which political system could be stable. Now, what we have in Spain right now is a very unstable political system. You have mentioned it before, no, Carlos? I mean, we, in Catalonia, we had three elections in four years, okay? And the last election, was, I mean, as, as um, uh, you said, no, uh, it was campaigned for the independence. So the politicians in Catalonia, when they arrived to power, they had campaigned on that. So now they feel they have to follow this mandate. It's true, they didn't have the majority, but they have the majority in the parliament. It's not enough because it's not the two thirds of the total seats, but still they feel they have to campaign on that. I mean, they have to, to, to follow the, the mandate, no? Go to Spain. We had two elections in six months. December 19, uh, 2015, uh, June 2016. I mean, it's a huge instability in the political system. Now, what we have, the situation now in Spain is that we have institutions that don't move. And the government is, again, the government and also with the support of, of some of the uh, parties in the opposition at the national level, they keep on defending the traditional institutions. But then Almon and Berba and other classic political scientists demonstrated that political culture on the one hand and institutions on the other need to come along consistently together. Otherwise, we have the risk of a very huge political instability. So I think that uh, on the government part, as you were talking about, the, the, which could be the incentives for the government to, to, to change their view. Well, I mean, think about this idea that institutions should evolve to better fit citizens' values and preferences. And now they're calling for the traditional constitution, but the constitution is too small. I mean, this problem is too big as to, as to be solved under the species of the, under the framework of the Constitution. They, they need to look for something else. This on the one hand. Then on the other hand, we have the Catalan, the Catalan system. I mean, one could think, no, after uh, uh, your intervention, are really Catalans brainwashed? Are really politicians like wicked, like witches? I will tend not to think not, it's not true. I mean, uh, what Martin was arguing is that there's a civil society, a rich civil society that has been moving, that has been mobilizing, that has had many, many experiences of participatory uh, learning skills, no? So I think that basically what is happening is that the political elite, and not only the political elite, also the, you know, the communication system of the whole country are you know, framing the problem in this way, in this conflictual way. Why? Because I think that com uh, confrontation benefits electorally to both parts. Now, for the uh, nationalist, uh, I mean, for the, for the national government, Spanish nationalism appears to feelings. So they create this sense of cohesion, unity with your equals, you know? What another political scientist or sociologist, Putnam, would call bonding. But on the other hand, this also creates uh, or incentives the lack of understanding of the other, you know, what could, we could call banding. So this frame, also in the, in the political system and in the media system, link this idea of nationalism with the recent history in Spain. And uh, I think that it reactivates the legacy of extreme political cleavages that are, have been there in Spain. We thought they were solved, so to speak, with the, you know, with the pact of, uh, uh, in, uh, in the transition to democracy, but they are there, they are latent. 
And if the political elites, you know, activate them and, and, and reactivate them, then uh, this is dangerous. So it's not that people are stupid or, you know, brainwashed. I think it is that a whole appar apparatus is being used, you know, by politicians, by the media system. Everybody is contributing to this polarization. And then when you incentive polarization, what has happened? People who are moderate get into this spiral of silence. Neole Newman, again, uh, a very old political scientist, in which you happen not to say what you think because you are or with me or against me. So I think that how can this end up? I think that there are two scenarios. On the one hand, uh, we could call for new elections, both at the national level and at the Catalan level. If you call for election at the Catalan level, probably strategically, it, this is a moment in which uh, secessionism is at its highest level of support. So probably this will benefit electorally to put them on and its government. Regarding Spain, I think that uh, uh, they will never call for a, for a new election right now. Even if you know, the support that the incumbent party is having from this you know, very static position could be high, but the last uh, evidence I have seen from a survey down, a telephonic survey by telephone uh, last Sunday, which is not very you know, trustable, uh, was giving more support for the socialist Spani uh, Spanish party because they are supporting the establishment and they are supporting the PP. Uh, well, I think I can stop here. Thank you. Thank you.